It is 1912. We are in London, England. Do you ever scratch your head this afternoon and wonder, what were they all thinking about over there while we were fighting these battles over here? Well, I think you're going to find some interesting connection. As I said, the play is A Woman's Influence, written by Gertrude Jennings in 1912. I take you now to the sitting room of the Lawrence household. The discussion revolves around working conditions in London at the time. Ms. Jennings, who wrote the play, was known as a prolific writer of plays and playlets and incorporated some wonderful comedy into her social commentary. I think you're going to enjoy this grandly. Come along, my dear. Come along if you want to speak to me. I'm off to the club, you know. You see old Bob Thurlow, just back from the South Pole. Great sport. Must hear the news. Well, what do you want? Oh, don't keep me. I want to shake old Bob by the hand. Offer my congratulations and that sort of thing. Good fellow, Bob. One of the best. Never gasses about himself or what he's done. Goes straight at a thing. Never satisfied until he's pulled it off. Look at what you want to say, Margaret. I want to get in at the start. It takes me five minutes to get to the club. Do that at three. Oh, God, will steal a march on me if I don't. What is it? What is it? Herbert, I want you to speak to Mr. Reed for me. About what? No use my speaking to Reed unless I know what I'm going to say. Reed's all right enough, but... Herbert, do listen to me. Something must be done for the women at Hill Rise Factory. The sweating that goes on there is a disgrace to this town. And I can do nothing to prevent it. That's just it. Nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. Don't worry your pretty little head. You all come out in the wash. But Herbert, something can be done and ought to be done. Mr. Reed as member here ought to know the condition of his people. He ought to remedy it. Well, ducky, uh, tell me another time. I'm busy now. You know, dear old Bob, I'm just off. But Herbert, you are always just off. Do promise to see Mr. Reed for me just for a minute. Do. Why not see yourself, old girl? You know I don't pay much attention to this sort of thing. I'd rather chuck the poor beggars a check and be done with it. I'll do that any day, Margaret. But then, you've plenty of your own. It isn't only money, Herbert, that they want. It's their whole social condition that's wrong. Well, you tell Reed yourself. That's a dear. He's not a bad sort. Rather an ass, perhaps. Mr. Reed <laughs> won't listen to me. Well, listen. Now yeah, that. Just think of that. Well, listen. Well, well. He thinks women ought not to meddle in politics. Well, to a girl, you know, I rather agree with him. Anyway, pretty women like you always get what you want. You know, ask me, I'll do it. Ask your husband. No use fussing about votes for yourself. What about sweet womanly influence <coughs> worth much more? All right, I'll go in. Bless me, it's Thicket. Two to one, not fair. I'm off. How do you miss Thicket? Goodbye. Any good? No. Not as much. Any news from Reed? No. Not as much. I'll show you the letter here. Did you bring the report? Oh, yes. It's taken me much longer than I thought. Mary Ball is bringing the list of names. The women outside the factory are very difficult to trace. They weren't over anxious at the factory to give me any information on them. Uh, no, I dare say not. Uh, where are the figures? Here. <coughs> oh, I see. About what we expected. The wages average six shillings a week all round. Yes, about that. And most of these women have five or six children. That's piecework, of course. The factory isn't officially supposed to know anything about that, but they wink at it all the same. I wonder what people who talk about women preserving the sanctity of the home would think of that. <laughs> so do I. Sanctity comes rather expensive when you've only got six shillings a week. It's heartrending, but what can we do? Temporary help is of so little use. If only we had the power to bring the matter before Parliament. <laughs> Has our promising member said nothing? You may very well call him our promising member. He certainly doesn't perform. 
He has politely written, refusing to give me an interview. Impertinence! If you'd have asked him to tea, he'd have come like a shot. But because he knows you want to speak on a great social matter, no. How <laughs> can you wonder? Why should he consider a creature who in political life doesn't exist? Ridiculous nonsense that it is. Here you are, an intelligent, well-read, thoughtful woman, taking a deep interest in the good of the country. You have plenty of money which you have earned by your own pen. You pay taxes, you contribute to the state, yet you can't get your voice heard at all. I mean, look at me. I'm not as rich, but I'm just as clever. <laughs> and just as helpless. If only Herbert would take the matter up. But he won't. Herbert takes no interest in reform. How often does he trouble to vote? <laughs> Never, unless he's badgered into it. There, you see, you've got the money and the brains. He's got the vote. Seems to me an unfair division. Really, Carrie? Oh, I dare say I'm rude, but then I'm truthful. <laughs> Politically, your husband has nothing, does nothing, and is nothing. I know, he's charming, a thoroughly nice fellow, a good sort, and all that sort of thing. But why he should represent your interests, I don't know. And Mrs. Perry says I ought to blandish him, her own words, into helping my poor starving workers. Mrs. Perry's a snake. How you can let that woman stay here beats me. She's very lonely. She has no settled home to go to, no children to care for. Good thing too. She's no woman to bring up children. <laughs> I tell you this, Margaret, there'd be much less wickedness in the world if all women brought up their children as you do. <laughs> it's not to my credit, Carrie. It's, it's simply that I've lived in a time when women have become thinking creatures and not mere puppets. Oh, if only men realized that the future of our race lies in our hands. Would they still like the fluffy ruffles of life, the flirt or the fool? So attractive during the engagement, so useless as a wife, even worse than useless as a mother. <laughs> but what do men care? As long as it's some pretty round-faced minx with curly hair, what does the future matter? <laughs> they uh, jaw about divine motherhood and do their best to drag it down. I don't agree, Carrie. It used to be so, I know, but things have changed. Men understand us better and respect us much more. It's a result of civilization. A test of man's refinement is his attitude towards women. Would a savage respect a woman? Of course not. Well, what does Reed say? <clears throat> Dear Mrs. Lawrence, I am sorry to hear there is so much misery amongst the women in the Hill Rise factories. No doubt the matter will be gone into before long. Before long. <laughs> I cannot see my way clear to doing anything just at present. Pig, <laughs> are you really a suffragette? <laughs> if you knew how very little savour there was in parliamentary life, you wouldn't thirst for it. He thirsted for it right enough. Besides, who's asking about parliamentary life? I hope to come in and see your husband soon. There are so many matters I wish to discuss with him. Mm -hmm. Yours sincerely, R. R. Reed. They'll discuss matters with the voter, but not with me. And meanwhile, this awful sweating business has got to go on checked. Oh, Margaret, it's heartbreaking. What's heartbreaking? It sounds too interesting. Do tell me. Oh, it wouldn't interest you, Mrs. Petty. Ah, oh, Miss Thicket, so nice to see you. And you haven't changed a bit. Well, it was just yesterday I said to Margaret, as Miss Thicket is in the beginning, so she will be in the middle, and so she will be to the end. <laughs> how very sweet of you. Oh, not at all. It's just how I feel. <laughs> oh, dear. What a lot of papers. Well, my darling Margaret, what are they all about? Oh, they're chiefly reports on the sweating system. I'm interested in these mills and I'm trying to improve the women's condition. Oh, Margaret, how good you are to take up such funny, dull subjects. Uh, don't you find it terribly aging? She doesn't look as if she did. Oh, no, she's very precious. <laughs> Still, I think all these things ought to be done by men, don't you? No, Aileen. Men with the best will in the world can't understand the subject as we do. I should like to see a man's face when he's suddenly confronted with the details of one of our cases. This one, for instance. See that? 
And that? Ah, oh, yes, very sad. But really, they oughtn't to have children, ought they? I mean, if they will work. Will work? What are these poor women to do unless they work? This one, Annie Matthews, her husband has deserted her. She brings up and supports his children by making shirts for a penny an hour. Liza Green, she works at the factories at Hill Rise and stands for eight hours a day, though her baby is one week old. And Mary Ball, wage earner for the household, husband drinks. She does one man's work at the factory at Hill Rise, but because she's a woman, she gets half wage. Oh, dear me, it's too bad, isn't it? But there's no use trying to do anything for them, dear. Well, these people are so ungrateful. Why, I gave the charwoman a fur jacket once, and I found out afterwards she'd pawned it. Oh. To buy food, I expect. Dear Miss Thicket, you're so strenuous. <laughs> but Margaret, if you really want to agitate or legislate or whatever it's called, why don't you take my advice and coax your husband into helping you? Mr. Reed would listen to him. Herbert doesn't care about these things, nor does Mr. Reed, for that matter. Oh, my dear, make them care. You can surely do that. <laughs> they are not so easily influenced. Uh, I expect you don't know how to set about it. You can't expect her methods to be quite the same as yours. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Never mind, dear. I like it. After 30, a woman does so appreciate a little flattery. Flattery? That's just it. You would think it as flattery. All these things, dear Margaret, are so easy to get from men. A woman's influence is... Isn't always for good. Oh, dear Miss Thicket, I'm sure yours would be. Such a waste, isn't it, to think it will never be exercised? <laughs> Margaret, can't I speak to your husband? I hardly think, Aileen. Oh, do let me try, just for fun. Sometimes a word from a stranger will be listened to when the poor wife preaches in vain. That's very kind of you, Aileen, but I don't think... <sighs> That's Mary Ball, I expect. I'll go check. She's very shy. A dear soul, isn't she? It's so quaint. Quaint? Yes, about this woman movement and votes and all that sort of thing. I'm sure I'm perfectly satisfied. I find nothing in life to grumble at. I don't want to vote. No, you wouldn't. Why should you? Well, exactly. Why should I? <laughs> Come, Mary. Don't be afraid. This is a friend of mine, Mrs. Perry. Do sit down and tell me everything that's happened. Much as usual. Thank you, Mum. How is the baby? He's rather poorly still. Thank you, Mum. Seems to have hardly any strength in him, so to speak. How is it you're away from the work so early, Mary? They turned me off, Miss. Turned you off? Yes, Mum. On account of baby, it was. I couldn't leave him alone, and there wasn't anybody to mind him, so they turned me away. I shall have to do this outside work now, miss. What are you paid for that, Mary? A penny an hour, miss. That's if I work sharp, but if I take my eyes off, time's lost. My sight's not what it used to be. <laughs> Still, summer's coming, and that means longer time for working, so one mustn't grumble. Is there much trouble down your way just now? There's always trouble, miss, so I, uh, I don't suppose ours is worse than any others. Still, some of us heard about these here votes for women, and we thought, if that came about, that might do us a bit of good. No, my good woman, that wouldn't help you. What use has it been to the men? <laughs> Asking your pardon, my lady, but we think different. We don't get much time for reading our way, but we do have a look at what's going on. And my father has often told me about how many things have been put right for the working men since they had a chance to say in what they wanted. And nobody gives the woman a chance, my lady. Well, you should get your husband to speak for you. Hmm? <clears throat> Mr. Ball is unfortunately not quite responsible. He's <clears throat> most kind, I'm sure, my lady, if only for the drink. 
still, he, he's never raised his hand to me, but as to giving his vote, well, I don't hardly know. He does vote, I suppose. Oh, yes, Mum. But he never knowed which way. <laughs> oh, here's the list of names you asked me for. I'd get more names if I had the time. Now, these are just the neighbours that have signed. Some says the vote's no good to them because their husbands pay the rent. So I says, if you don't want it for yourself, give it to them that does, I says. Quite right, Mary. You see, Aileen, 35 names in Mary Ball's own little circle. Isn't that a proof that working women are beginning to take the vote seriously? Oh, poor dears. Of course they want it. But I'm sure I could do more for them in five minutes with Mr. Reed or even Mr. Lawrence than a hundred votes. Then in Evan's name, my lady, I wish you'd do it. Oh. Mm. Huh? But, um, asking your pardon, I, I don't suppose you know just what it is you're saying or, or what it all means to us. It's a pretty rough life down there and it's a rough lot that live it. But we ain't beasts, so we've been treated like them. Not saying anything against the men, they're as God made them. <laughs> there are some things no man can understand the way of. I don't know if you're a mother of children, my lady, but if you are, you'll know what I'm saying's right. It's not men who can help us anymore, it's women, it's ourselves. And that's the truth. Really? You quite overwhelm me. I, I ask your pardon, I oughtn't so have spoke, I, I forgot myself. But these things, they burn inside us till it seems they must out. I'm sorry, Mum. Oh, Mary, I'm glad you've spoken. You bear too much in silence. It falls on deaf ears half the time. Come, Mary, I want to see you get some tea. I've got plans for you. You mustn't be afraid. You and the children will be well taken care of until the time comes when you can speak for yourselves. Thank you, Mum. But I'm so ashamed to have said anything. I felt sort of carried away. Good day, miss. Good day, my lady. Come. So you see, Mrs. Perry, women do want the vote. <clears throat> Dear Margaret, I oughtn't to encourage this discontent among the lower classes. It's so unnecessary. Well, they're always making demands upon us. Then let them demand something that'll improve their condition. Much as well, you know. <laughs> well, you haven't convinced me in the least little bit, dear Miss Thicket. I still believe that my way of getting a thing is the best way. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, just for a joke, I'll bet you a sovereign that I'll get Mr. Lawrence and through him, Mr. Reed, to take up this woman's sweating business at Hillrise, and at least ask a question in the house about it. How are you going to do it? Ah, that's my affair. <laughs> well, what do you say? Hmm. Oh, all right. It can do no harm. If I succeed, it will rather shake your belief in votes for women, won't it? <laughs> No more than, if you fail, it will shake your disbelief in yourself. Oh, good day. <laughs> How are you again, Miss Thicket? Just off? Goodbye. Oh, can I call your cab? No, thanks. I want to say goodbye to Margaret. Right. She's getting married somebody. Tea somewhere. Ah, yes, I dare say. <sighs> say, where are you going for tea, Marjorie, girl? <laughs> Boudoir? Right here. You'll see me there. What's what's up? What's wrong? Is is that is that you, Mrs. Patty? Yes. I say, don't don't do that. I'll get Margaret. Oh no, dear Mr. Lawrence, please don't. Well, well then, Miss Thicket, she's only just left. A oh, woman knows what to say. No, no, please don't. Oh. Well then, I'll just get out of the way then. Get out. Oh please don't leave me here alone. What am I to do? <laughs> oh, nothing. It's all right, really. I, I shall be better in a moment. So stupid of me. We women are such foolish creatures. So different from you. 
How I envy your strength, your self-control. Oh. <laughs> well, do sit down and talk to me just for a moment. I feel sure it will do me some good. Uh, I'm afraid I'm an awful sight. Hey, not at all. You, you wouldn't be that. Oh? It's so sweet of you. Nonsense. You're top polar looks. Oh. And so I always say to Margaret. Margaret? Yes, she quite agrees with me. But now, Mrs. Petty, won't you tell me what's troubling you? I, I know it can't be money as I'm your trustee. Oh, no, it's not money. In fact, it's not my own troubles at all. Not? No, indeed. Far, far otherwise. Won't you tell me? May I? Do. Oh, Mr. Lawrence, it's these poor women in the factories. The distress, the misery is awful. I can't do anything. But what the weak, faltering instinct of a woman discovers, the strong hand of a man can put right. Oh, Mr. Lawrence, would you help me? In, in what way, Mrs. Petty? What, what can I do? What, what can I do, you know? Oh, well, won't you go to Mr. Reed and ask him to do something about this awful business? Why, he would listen to you, and he wouldn't pay any attention to poor me. Well, I'm sure if you went to see Reed, he'd do anything he could for you. <laughs> oh, no. I heard he's most unsympathetic, that he cares very little for other people's troubles. So different from you, dear, kind Mr. Lawrence. Well, <laughs> I'm afraid there's, there's not very much I can do, but, but what I can is at your service. Oh, how very good you are. How absurd it is to speak about votes for women when men are so gentle, so unselfish. <laughs> so, what is it that you think can be done, Mrs. Petty? Oh, I'm, I'm so ignorant. I... I hardly like to say, but I think perhaps Mr. Reed ought to ask a question in the house about the underpayment of women workers. <laughs> well, why shouldn't he use this factory as a case in point? Uh, I, I'm afraid he, he couldn't do that, but I dare say he could quote statistics. I'm no businessman, and these things are <laughs> difficult to explain to a lady. But when you monkey with wages, then shares go down. Oh. And then there's a row with the shareholders, see, and no end of a fuss begins. Oh, but surely shareholders oughtn't to mind if their shares do go down a little if it's to help the poor woman. No, they oughtn't, of course, but they're, they're not all like you, Mrs. Perry. They're not all like you. That's the, the trouble, you see. Now, you wouldn't care one bit, I swear, if your shares weren't to earn... 7% for a year, or, or two, if it benefit the workers. Not at all. Of course, my shares couldn't go down. Uh, they're in consoles or something? Oh, bless my soul, no, you, you wouldn't get 7% in consoles. No. no, no, Mrs. Perry. I promised your husband I would look after your money, and I kept my word. Oh. It's all invested in Hillrise Securities. What? <laughs> yes, all the factories are in Margaret's district. Jolly investment. Not likely to go down either, unless anything happens to upset it. Oh, unless anything happens to upset it. Well, uh, what's the matter? Nothing. Really nothing. Oh, all right. What do you want me to say to Reed? I can see him tomorrow if you like. He thinks quite a lot of what I have to say. Nice fellow. He'll get the whole thing going in no time at all. Oh, will he? Rather. Leave it to me. Go in a flash. But Mr. Lawrence, I've thought up a little plan. Huh. Oh, won't you tell me? I think I'd better wait until I've got it all worked out. Then I'll tell you, and it shall be our little secret, and you'll help me with it, won't you? <laughs> Rather, you know I will. Anything you need, trust me. Oh, thank you. I'll let you know as soon as I've got it all fixed up. But meanwhile, dear Mr. Lawrence, I want you to keep absolute silence over the matter. Not to see Mr. Reed or upset yourself over the question in any way. I can't explain why, but if you do, it will absolutely ruin my little scheme. Will you promise? Certainly, but what am I to do about Margaret? Margaret? Yeah, she's always wanted me to go into it with her. <laughs> well? Tell her you're conscious now, will you? Oh, she talks about it quite a bit. Never lets me get a word in. 
But I'm sure you can be firm when really necessary. Yes, I can tell you're full of hidden strength. Well, as to that, I'm a master here, of course. Of course. So you'll tell dear Margaret you can do nothing. Very well. And you'll keep my little secret? I swear it. <coughs> Dearest Margaret, so you gave the poor creature her tea. What a ministering angel you are. Well, I must really tidy myself up a little before tea. I shan't be a moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know what you think, Margaret. What do I think? You would think I was, was flirting with, with Mrs. Petty. <laughs> well, and why shouldn't you? What? My dear old boy, do you suppose I don't know Aileen by now? Why, she behaves like that with every man she meets. Besides, do you suppose I don't know you? Uh, how do you mean? Only that I've absolute confidence in you. You're not angry, then? Not the least little bit in the world. Oh, Margaret, you're the nicest, dearest, most Yes, sensible. yes, I know, I know. But what I don't understand is why Aileen was making a mystery of it all. Of, uh, all what? Why that she asked you to help us. You know that, then? Uh, of course, why not? Uh, see, she has this idea of her own, you see. So you had promised not to do anything for Hill Rise yet a while? Yes. What, what, what factory did you say again? The Hill Rise factory. That's the worst by far. Didn't you know? Uh, no. Oh, Herbert, I've told you over and over again. Y yes, I know, but I, I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> you, you know how it is. Men have so much to think about. They, they can't always be listening. So much chatter. But now you tell me this, and I begin to realize that's why she changed all of a sudden and didn't want me to go to Reed. She changed and didn't want you to see Reed? Yes, because don't you see, all her money's in Hill Rise, and she only just found out. Oh, I see. So you had promised to see Reed before then? Well, uh, girl, you know how it is. When I, when I saw her here crying... Crying? Yes, for the poor women. It was awfully sweet of her. Oh, Herbert. So this is what you mean by a woman's influence. This is how we are to use our weapon, to arm our fighters in our great cause to carry out our mighty enterprise. <coughs> Any little flirt or idle, heartless woman can bend a man's will to do her bidding at any given moment. What shall we do with such weapons? What, what do you mean? I mean that Mrs. Perry was wheedling you to do something as a joke, a bet. A bet? <laughs> yes, a bet with Miss Thicket. And then when she found out it would damage her own interest, she drew back and made you promise not to do anything. By sure. What makes you think so? I don't think. I know. Oh, my word. That's too bad. And I shall tell her so. Oh, she'd only laugh. <coughs> laugh indeed. It simply horrifies me. I don't find it the least bit amusing. No, Herbert. It really isn't amusing when one thinks of all the sin and the misery that lie underneath it all. The helplessness of woman using her one weapon, sometimes beautifully, and sometimes frivolously, like today, sometimes with degradation, but always, always the same weapon. Oh, if only you men would give us a use of another one, the use of our intelligence, so we could realize we are reasonable creatures, fit to be heard, heard equally with man, and not parasites. I know you love and respect me, I want you to love and respect women for thy sake. Give her a place in society that is her right. She is worthy. She will become more worthy. Help her then. And one day you will look back and be proud of what you have done. I wonder if you're right, Margaret. I, I'm beginning to think there's something in what you say. And then I want to help you after all. Oh, my dear. 
but I don't want you to come just because I've persuaded you, or if you think it's against your better judgment. I want you to come because you see the cause is just. I do see it, and I will help Margaret. I, I can in a hundred ways, and the effect will be ever so much easier if we do it together. Oh, my dear. That is the whole key to the women's movement. We can do so much more if we work together.